Do you know what the spare tire pressure is on your Airstream? And heck, do you even know how to get it out of its carrier on your front of your Airstream? In this week's episode of Love Sub, we're going to continue part two of our spring maintenance, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So join us for this episode of Love Sub. Okay, the first thing we're going to cover today in our spring maintenance is checking the pressure on your spare tire. Okay, and so most Airstreams, you may know this or not, but uh, if you have a dual axle Airstream, you can actually tow for some distance with only three uh, tires and wheels. You can actually remove the blown tire and tow with just three wheels. The uh, torsion bar suspension allows you to do that. But if you have a single axle like a Bambi or something, you're going to need to know how to change your spare tire. And it's best done at a place like a driveway like this when you can practice versus being out on I-95 southbound in Connecticut when you're trying to change that tire. So. Um, my Airstream has dual axles, but it came with a spare tire, so we're going to check the pressure of it anyway. We're going to go ahead and start that right now. Okay, we're going to start by lowering the spare tire. Uh, you can see the mechanism here is in the front, right behind the propane tanks, and it's kind of like a little, the whole mechanism is going to lower down. So you're going to start by removing this pin. I use a, uh, a needle nose to make it easier. You're going to remove the pin. So this little pin has to come off. You take the little pin off. And then you slide this mechanism off its uh, post. And it's always a good idea to lubricate this as well uh, because you'll notice that it'll be a little bit stuck. So you want to take, hold the handle, slide this off. And then you lower everything down. Okay, you can see I've lowered the tire from its mechanism. The next thing to do is to get it off of its little cradle. Which we'll do. And there we have our Airstream spare tire. Certainly not as pretty as the aluminum alloy ones that we have, but we're gonna go ahead and check its pressure, see where it's at. Okay, so we've got the tire out. We've done a quick inspection to make sure it's not cracked or any type of problem. So let's go ahead and check the pressure on this puppy. All right, we got our digital pressure gauge. And you can see it reads about 30 PSI. This is supposed to be inflated to 50 PSI. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. But we're gonna also kill two birds with one stone because we're gonna test a new feature of my F-150 and we're gonna inflate it using the truck. So as you guys know, we've just recently purchased a new tow vehicle and I'll link the card up above. Uh, to us buying that. But one of the cool features about this is that it has a 110 volt, 400 watt maximum uh, plug in it. It's got one here and it's got one in the back. And I carry a, a 110 volt uh, air pump that I would usually use at a campground or at home to pump up the tires. But now I can do this on the road if I have to. So we're gonna test that out to see how it works. So as you can tell, we'll open that guy up, plug him in. And then we're going to go ahead and fill up that Airstream spare tire. Okay, as you can see, this is my Campbell Housefield, Housefeld uh, air compressor. So we're going to hook this up. You're going to put a link to that in the description? Yeah, I'll have a link. You can get this at Home Depot or whatever. We're going to go ahead and pump it up. How much does it read? 50. Excellent. So we are good to go. We've pumped up our tire. We've tested both the front and the rear 110 volt plug of the new truck. And now we're going to put this thing uh, back in its carrier. Don't forget to put your little cap back on. 
Okay, so putting it back is literally the reverse of taking it apart. So we're gonna put it into its cradle. We're gonna raise the cradle up, latch it, and then put that pin and the uh, cotter pin. Back. What side do you put up? Side. Is there when you have to put it one way or the other, or is it just doesn't matter? Yeah, it, 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 I don't know if it matters or not. If you think it matters, you can comment in the description below. I always put it so that the valve stem faces up. So any rocks or crap or something that may kick up wouldn't damage the valve stem. That's just how I do it. Don't know if it's right or wrong. So let's get this thing installed. Almost there. Almost there. See it securely. And we're gonna lift this guy up. Cameraman's gonna hand you a pin. What are those little funny shaped pins called? They're like cotter pins or something? Yep. There, cotter pin is in. Wheel is stowed. It's of the right pressure. And we're ready should we have a problem. Okay, this next item here is going to involve these guys. I'm not really gonna take the pants uh, wheel covers off but it is to check the date of your last wheel bearing repack. And of course, an important part of any maintenance program is to have fastidious records. And of course I do. So when I look back, my wheel bearings were last repacked at 58,134.6 miles. I repack them every 10,000 miles. So I'm therefore due at 68,134 miles. And the Love Sub currently has on it 64,232.3 miles. So I've still got about 3,000 change to go. So probably when we get back from our first trip, we'll go ahead and repack the wheel bearings. I'll have a video for that, but in the meantime, if you, uh, there's a lot of videos of repacking wheel bearings on YouTube, so you can certainly check those out. But this is just a check of our records, and we're good to go on the wheel bearing repack. All right. The next item on our spring maintenance list is our electric jack. And there's really only one maintenance point that I typically do here, and that's to lubricate the pin on the inside. But this is also a great opportunity to practice. And that's the great thing about maintenance, is it's not only making things better and getting ready for the season, but it allows you to practice emergency events that you might need to consider. For example, should your electric hitch fail, you've got to be able to do this thing manually. So how would you do that? So the head here, is secured by three set screws, which are 532nd set screws. So you gotta make sure you have a 532nd Allen screw. Allen wrench, right? Allen wrench, yep. And you unscrew those. And through the magic of video, it's pretty easy to unscrew these. And then you remove the head, and you can see the grease on the pin. As well as some lubrication on the inside there. So once that's off, especially if you have an older Airstream, you want to make sure you've got the manual jack uh, crank wrench. And that's got the little pin there. And you would insert that here. And in an emergency, you could lower or raise, or raise your jack. And we have had our jack hit head fail. So this is something that you really should learn how to do. And also make sure you've got the right tools to do so. So we're just gonna take a little bit of our lubricant here. That's the same stuff that you use for your hitch ball, right? Yeah. Just gonna dab a little bit over there. Okay. 
A little dabble do ya? A little dabble do ya, and then make sure that pin is lubricated in there. We're gonna go ahead and replace our jack head. Go ahead and tighten those screws, and then we're done maintaining our electric jack. For item number four on our spring maintenance list, I want to thank one of our viewers who actually mentioned this to me and I had forgotten about it. And this is when I was talking about my wheel chocks expiring. And she actually had the very astute uh, observation that your LP gas and carbon monoxide detector usually has a finite lifespan. And depending upon the model, you need to check it, but most of them last between five and seven years. So if you have, or you should have, one of those detectors. Go ahead and check its date. If it's between five and seven years, I might recommend changing it. So we're gonna go ahead and look at ours. All right, we're inside the Airstream and we're gonna go ahead and locate our LP gas detector. The little guy's down there and it's not blinking right now um, because the batteries aren't hooked up. But it's important to remember too, just because it's blinking doesn't mean that the elements on the inside are capable of detecting an LP gas lesion. That's just showing that the power is on and stuff like that. So definitely consider looking into that. As I said, most of the research I've shown has said about five to seven years for these little guys. Looks like mine's out of date, so I might be replacing that before we get going here. To end this video, if you guys watched part one of my spring maintenance, you'll notice that I was very surprised to find out that my wheel chocks said to replace after May of 2006. So of course, I can't handle something like that. So I had to go out and buy all four new wheel chocks properly labeled you can see that they are now safe it's interesting that these don't have expiration dates on them so either they've improved the molding of the product or they just realized that nobody's actually doing this except for me so <laughs> nevertheless we've got new wheel chocks so that's our episode i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something and we'll inspire you to do some spring maintenance if you like our video give us a thumbs up Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And as always, leave a comment if there's something that you do, you do for your spring maintenance. Yep, and like I say, we come out with Airstream-related RV topics every Tuesday. And we're going to be coming up with something next week. And hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.